Hello everyone. Today's devotional reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 7 through 13, where it is written, Then he went out among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you, and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So Jesus sent out the apostles with authority to cast out demons, and they did. Many people, uh, you know, more modern times say, well, you know, demon, that's a metaphor. I mean, it's for personal struggles people have. The apostles must have encouraged people to get over their anger, their alcohol abuse, their what have you, and they must have. Well, that is one interpretation. And yes, certainly people in their own fallen state struggle with sins such as alcoholism, rage, gossip, and so on. And... That's not what the text says. It says they cast out demons. This might be hard for people in 21st century North America to accept, but the supernatural is real. Just because you can't see it and can't verify your five senses doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I'm not talking about the social sciences like counseling or therapy or social work. I mean, yes, those are some great things. But those, all those uh, ideas they have, you can't verify them by their existence. I'm not talking about, you know, the social sciences. I'm talking about something very real. Angels and demons do exist. And they do have an influence on people. Now, before you start freaking out that we're living in a real-life horror film, like The Exorcist and so on, but yes, while demonic activity does exist, it's not like in a horror film. It's usually much more subtle. It's like, hey, 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 tell that piece, of, tell that jerk to where he should stick it. Yeah, have one more drink. Eh, uh, don't, nah, you don't have to worry about that. The subtle influences is, is almost always how demons work. And they are destructive. They prey on our own weaknesses, so we open our mouth and dig our grave, we have another drink and another, and things don't end well, and so on. That's how it works. The good news is, the demons, well, there's several, they're powerful, they're not God. God will always, always have them under control. Plus, the angels exist, and they outnumber the demons two to one. And they're just as powerful. And they have the advantage of numbers. But getting out of the, uh, you know, how many angels can dance in ahead of the pin, let's get down to the practical side of things. Yes, the supernatural exists. And God has not left us as orphans. Not only is God more powerful, God gives us the spiritual means to overcome the demons just as the apostles did. They are baptism, which the demons cannot undo. There's confession and absolution, where we know no matter what, our sins are forgiven. There's the body and blood of our Lord we receive, where he strengthens us in faith. In faith, it's natural protection against the uh, demons. There's reading the scriptures. There's private prayer. But yes, the supernatural is very real. You don't need to uh, have garlic or crucifix or holy water and have all these things drive them off. Just the things I said. Baptism, communion, scripture reading, private prayer, confession and absolution. These are the means by which to prevail over the demonic. The demonic's very real. And they're vulnerable to the things God has given us. So no, this isn't superstition of, oh, I repeat a Bible verse 20 times, I'll be free. Rather, you approach the word and the sacraments in faith. That faith is God's natural protection, natural protection against the demonic. For the demonic want to dra drag us down with them. They made a choice to disobey God, and they were gone. They don't have a second chance because they're immortal. Our ancestors chose to walk away from God, and that's why we have the mess now. But we're mortal. We can die, which means God can save us, which is what God did. 
God entered the world in the person of Jesus Christ. God died to forgive us our sins, and he rose again to give us eternal life and salvation. The demons know they can't have that because they are immortal. They're mad, and they want to bring us down with them. That's by these very means. Scripture, confession, absolution, baptism, communion, private prayer, that's the protection. Remember it. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your faith, which is the natural protection. God, please protect us always from the evil forces, both human and spiritual in this world. And God, please guard us against our own sinful human selves. God, we love you. You love us. Guard us always in you. Amen.